active. I was going to call you active. I'm not active. <laughs> Eli is looking very sad right now. <laughs> Eli and Makowski, as we take a look at our next series, Mind Freak versus Dead Inside, which is what Eli is feeling like right now. <laughs> After being mistakenly called active, I'm absolutely dead inside. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Tim's a great guy, but yes, Pete. I have been so excited about mm -hmm. this matchup. This was one that I circled on my notes, like from step one, as being one of the hypest matches that we're going to see. The Aussies have gotten better and better as the series, as the season has gone on, and this dead inside roster has to be one of the best teams that we've seen form to play in the open bracket in recent memory. This is one of our heavyweight matchups here in the open bracket. Mind Freak not making out of the open bracket last event if not for two Game 5 losses. The previous land, though, in London, they did make it out. Not only made it out of the open bracket, but got all the way to top 12. So we know what their Enemy ceiling is. We know what their score. potential looks like. And it looks like here off the start, they're taking a big advantage. 90% on the board to nothing for the opposition. Such a huge start for the Aussies. And look at this. They're also rotating over to the tower side of the map. This is where the second hill comes in as well. So. It's, it's important to not only capture the hill that is currently in place, but also rotate for next. They've done a beautiful job of that. They've actually got three dead at the same time they kept the hill. This is as good a start as you could ask for. And by taking down the whole team for dead inside at the same time they scored, Eli, like you said, they're going to earn that next rotation and already start the scoring. It's 125 percentage points in this King of the Hill opening break. Dead inside have got to get off the floor. Actually, it looks like we had the the team's reverse, so they did just flip it. So they threw us off there, but it's dead inside on the left side of your screen, Mind Freak on the right side. So it's actually a huge start for dead inside. We're gonna get the names on the screen here shortly, just bear with us, but uh, they're playing by the book so far. I think that's fitting, and it matches the energy level that we saw at the end of that Ascending Baseline versus Dead Inside series, where Ascending Baseline took game one and put Dead Inside score. on the ropes. Now they're rolling. Incoming. Absolute domination here to start 2-0, and there's not even 20 seconds Enemy off the clock. The hill. And not sure which one. This is either Scoob or Rice. Definitely one of the two MNK players on the side of Mind Freak that we're on board with right now. Couple good slays. As another player approaching with the QT, great movement to get out of the situation and still be alive right now. Also finds the assist, so survivability insane right now. But Dead Inside continue to push, and they will shut that player down. Dead Inside making their push, but it's possession of the hill for Mind Freak. A little bit of a flank here from HGS 356. We'll get those names up for now. Shots and nades out on the camo side. You can see that power up is up now. It's an even 2v2 for it. I think Mind Freak might actually have a numbers edge with the player on the frags up top. Yes, they do. So they play it very well. They position themselves well, and now they're making a flank after losing three members. This is going to be almost impossible to earn the camo, despite what looked like a good setup. There's a great flank from a member of Dead Inside that go to the key door spot there. It was just the extra angle they needed to win that fight. So huge heads up plays by them. Either team really getting a comfortable hold of this hill just yet, but it is dead inside now taking the lead on it. Mind Freak have to find a way to break in. To lose the third hill in a row, it's just probably too big a deficit to come back from. I would like to see Mind Freak take this one. Yeah, 2-0 start with 100% times two of the hill control. That's like winning an oddball round, 100 to zero. So the domination has been present here for dead inside, but for now, Numbers edge here for Mind Freak, and they're in the hill with it. Scoopmeister with that no scope takes his opponent down to one HP. Assist comes through. Great play, great support. A little bait and switch action there inside of the hill, and Mind Freak are starting to put it together. Anybody has been watching or following Scoopmeister? This guy literally forged the best warm up map that we have in Halo Infinite, and watching him play it is mesmerizing. He just hits no scope after no scope after no scope. Let's see if he can put those reps to work here. Unable to connect on the last two bullets of the sniper. It's just good pressure coming in from dead inside. They're not sending one by one. It's always at least two members attacking. Now, because of how efficient and dominant dead inside have been off the start here, there hasn't been much clock in regulation burned off. So Mind Freak could go down 3-0, Eli. But like you said, they want to make this a one point game. Still three and a half minutes left in regulation. So plenty of time to make that 3-0 comeback. But Mind Freak want to start getting a little seeing is believing going on here. I have to agree, it's definitely been more slays on the side of dead inside, but this third hill has been a lot mixier than the first two. We see a trade come out, huge double kill. Looks like Ezo gonna be the last member of dead inside alive, but he's got that hill time and no one's contesting him just yet. Ezo in the hill, he's got Envor. 
It's duo for now, inside of it, switching in and out. Enemy team on board now, wow. starts to push out that Enemy line of scrimmage. And my god, no contested, no shots fired, even into the A base, much less the suit of Ezo, as Mind Freak have not shown their best, best version of King of the Hill Halo here. It's a 3 0 flawless start for Dead Inside. Now, you start to let the game come to you a little bit. Mind Freak are in a situation where they have to overextend and chase, and it's still early, all things considered, with 3 11 left on the clock. Plasma missing a couple shots there in that engagement. I'm not used to seeing that from him. Usually one of the straightest shooters in the entire continent of Australia. But uh, yeah, I have to agree. I mean, Mind Freak fought well for that third hill. Just ultimately, Dead Side had strong end game. Last player alive on their team, captain. But team I do also agree hill. with Mind Freak's decision to rotate to here early. They did secure about 60% of the hill before losing their setup. That early rotation earns them the early lead on hill number four, but Dead Inside are already back in it. And that is not a good sign for Mind Freak. The fact that they had the early rotation, you're almost always going to get to at least 50%. With efficiency, maybe 75 they were only able to get in between that. So we're not seeing the best version of Mind Freak. We're not seeing the version of Mind Freak that made it out of the open bracket and into top 12. But now Scoopmeister has something else to say about it. And all it takes is one spark, one triple kill, one dead. Tight moment for Mind Freak, and they could get back in this, but they must get something going. Otherwise, this game one's going to dead inside. Shout out to Coach Looney. Talked to him a little bit before the series. Told him if there's one thing you need to do is get these guys fired up. If they get a nice double kill, you need to roar. Get these guys adrenaline flowing. That is what I look for in a coach. Give them the hype. And right now, Skymizer are hitting some shots. So this is the best that they've looked yet to capture a hill, but that clock is dwindling down now less than three minutes on it. Steady with that mouse and Scoopmeister. A few no scopes now. Gonna finish the fight, finish the job. A couple other players in the hill for Mind Freak. So a defensive positioning here on the green side for Scoopmeister. A spawns for the rest of Mind Freak and the push is already through, but dead Scoopmeister takes advantage of it instantaneously. And that's exactly what we were talking about. Getting a little killing spree, a couple montage moments. Jeff Steitzer in your ear and it looks like Mind Freak have gotten themselves back in this fight. Still have plenty of time left, two and a half on the clock, and that will make it a two-point game. Big Hill win at the very least, even if they do end up losing this, to say, you know, we, we put up a good fight, you know? That's something kind of that you take with you into game two, and don't get me wrong, they are still absolutely in this, but score it all is a big deal so far, and maybe that's the part they needed to get back into it. Confidence Hill that you take into game two, but Mind Freak are still in this, only down by two. Still over two minutes left on the clock, so the timing, the pacing is in their favor. The match so far has not. Still on board here with Mind Freak. This one is sways as the push comes through from the dummy side. An aggressive push here from Dead Inside, playing for this next camo. And if not for Plasma and his duo on the dummy door, it might just get a two down on each side. And it looks like Camo was able to go to Dead Inside, and that is incredible. You can almost see Plasma looking around for it, like, where did it go? But I believe Dead Inside has it. Sniper in the hand of Plasma. Cannot land that last shot. It's kind of cautious here as he pushes forward, recognizes he's too far up. Also sees two of his teammates die in the kill feed. That is not a good sign. But able to find a kill, maybe two. Wisely backs down here, has a teammate's help as well. Enemy team took the hill. Just feels like Dead Inside's defense has been way too strong in any situation that Mindfreak trying to push in. And you can sense Dead Inside don't feel rest to get inside the hill waiting for the opportunity to strike, and here it is. Three go down for Mind Freak, dead inside, two down, so a lot of players on the respawn screen as Scoobbuster makes his way through to top mid, has a flank set up here, but recognizes through communication or game sense that the player is nearby, close to the ventilator, takes him down, quick flick, double kill to the right, double and that's the kill. advantage you have on MNK. Enemy team Definitely took turning the faster than any controller ever could in that situation. Enemy is so score. smooth with it, man. It's just, I don't know, his target, Acquisition ability. Enemy team Some of the most impressive that we see it across all mouse and keyboard players. He does finally get taken down. It's going to be a double kill for Piggy. Enemy team drops out, but another member of Mind Freak's there, and if they cap this, they're right back in it. Oh, the no scope from Sways as he's not having himself the game we're used to seeing from him, but maybe this gets him back in the mix. This gets Mind Freak back in the mix. They're on a roll here, scoring the previous two hills. One point game, one and a half minutes left. Oh, he's out here. Okay, so people talk to me about this team. I, myself, I consider Sways, and, and don't get me wrong, I like all these guys, they're all fantastic players, but I consider Sways their best player. I think when he is popping off, 
this team is could beat almost anybody, especially in this open bracket. But he's just not he's not himself yet. But you know, a little bit of He's on mouse and keyboard, right? No, no, no. He's he's on controller. Okay. Swayze was the guy that we saw native go on that crazy shock rifle spree on recharge right. in Atlanta. And he is an absolute menace. But right now, just not playing like his normal self. If he can start catching fire, Mindfreak can absolutely come back in. And by the way, while I've been Dude. yapping, they've almost oh! secured the third hill. Beautiful headshot. You can only see the head, and he took it. As Descendant starts to make his way into a defensive posturing position. 117 on the clock, and oh. Mind Freak are just five seconds away from tying this one up. Descendant takes it to the sky with use of the repulsor, stands alive, and somehow wins what looks like a BXP fight. This has been an insane comeback. Mind Freak needs literally one second. They are four dead, so this next push has to be successful for Mind Freak. Takes 40 seconds to capture a single hill. Mind Freak, no, they can take their time with this. I'd like to see them earn some space on the other side of the map and then approach from multiple angles simultaneously they can overtake this hill and get the last second that they need that's what it looks like mind freak are doing waiting for all four to spawn up but the first strike goes to dead inside as rice goes down and now oh Skewmeister looks to clean up on some of that damage but the nest is too strong on that positioning as dead inside are able to earn a crucial two slays and they're going for the finishing blow right here that inside just have to hold off this next push and they'll close out game number one. But Mind Freak, should they get the Hill player out, will have a great chance to take it for themselves. Look at the push that's coming in from multiple angles. He pulls the Hill player out. And at the last second, Ezo able to kill the Hill player. Spike. Everyone's rushing in. Nobody sees him. Mind Freak are dive bombing towards the Hill and they're they're putting it all in. They're all in. All the chips into the middle. Oh, oh but Mind Freak goes off the map and dead inside with the Mind the Gap. Take game one. What an insane <laughs> end to that game. Oh. The contesting of the hill in every situation was so clutch from dead inside. If they just step out of the hill for one second, Mind Freak closes that out and tie it up. But Mind Freak take a lot of momentum with him from that. It I was think. almost in an odd way a disadvantage for Mind Freak to be so close because they were so force blinder. Yeah. If you will, on the hill that they did not see Ezo on the flank from the Nest Bridge, causing chaos, getting damage, slays, and assist, and that wrapped it up. But you gotta be impressed with Mind Freak. You gotta be impressed that they're able to bounce back. Not only did they take a confidence hill into game two, I think they showed enough towards the end of game one to say, all right, we're in this series, we're ready to roll, we're down 0 1, but we can tie this thing up right here with a Slayer. Do you think almost having it and then just missing out on that last second hurt for game two, or do you think they're feeling it right? Like, no, we can do, we can take game two. I think Swayze just straight up was not warmed up, and now I yeah. think he is. After he hits that disgusting no double kill right there. It, it, I think they're fine. I don't think they're like shook by the fact that like, hey, we, we kind of threw that last hill. How did he win this? Uh, yeah. I, if he, and that's huge. That, that was to stop them from making a 3-3. Descend it with the play of the game right here, with the fist. That was insane. Makes it a double. That was the team wipe. And you're right, Mind Freak in that moment, they played it right. They waited for all four to spawn up at 99% to 5% knew that they had time on their side. But here's that flank from Ezo. So much focus, so much prioritization on scoring this final nanosecond that they never saw Ezo coming. So insane the end game. All so many kills trade out, and the repulsor makes the difference in the final kill. That's why you gotta go out of your way to get the Get the items, man, that made the difference. Taking a look at the damage column here. Two mouse and keyboard players with the most damage on uh, Mind Freak. And Swayze, who I said is probably their best player, the lowest in the lobby, which I'm just not used to seeing. I think that if he catches fire, he absolutely brings it to this roster. I think all 5,300 of that damage he like came in the final five minutes. He it was not like doing much. He was negative 10, I think, to start that one. And I always say you can't look at KD stats, but once you're double positive or double negative, you do have to respect the stat line and bring it up and, and say you're either costing or in some cases carrying the squad. And that was just not the start that uh, Mind Freak needed as Dead Inside are able to take game one, four to two. But like we said, Mind Freak showed more than enough towards the end of that game one to give themselves hope and a shot in this series. A little overhead look at our feature station. We got Looney, by the way, coaching Mind Freak over there, YouTuber. Shout out to Looney, also streamer. And then uh, looks like there might be some kind of discrepancy here. Piffin is the official here. Yep. Also a streamer talking to Piggy right now about something. Shout out to Coach Laz as well, Callus. Had a chance to talk to Laz uh, right before the tournament started this morning, and he said, man, it's been a rough month for me and Mikowski, but everything happens for a reason. And I could not have asked for a better squad to feel like we have 
the best chance possible to crawl out of the open bracket and make it onto the main stage at the Halo World Championship in just one month in Seattle. So Laz had a little bit of a rough, bumpy road to get here, but he got here, and he got here with the squad he wanted with Descendant and Ezo, two up-and-coming players. Really feels like Descendant's made a name for himself already. He did have a name change, so I guess when you consider that, he's still trying to make a name for himself in that sense. But Ezo is a guy to keep his eye on. Ezo is one of the top ascending players here in HES. So is he ascending? Do you have ascending and descendant? Well, they did beat ascending baseline, <laughs> so I guess well, he... Ezo, <laughs> the first time I ever saw Ezo was when I casted a tournament for ascending baseline. And he was like, I was like, who is this kid? Like, he was taking over and dominating the draft tournament. So, I could tell from the first time I ever watched him play, he was going to be somebody. So many players, Eli, I don't know if it's because so many are on controller or it's just Halo and we've been playing for 20 years, but a lot of players' POVs look fairly similar, right? Like, you can't, if you took the names off, the overlays out, you couldn't tell quite the difference between a lot of those middle of the pack players, but there's certain guys at the top of the HCS and the top of the open bracket scene that just look a little different. And Ezo's definitely one of those guys. You see his POV and you're kind of wondering what sensitivity does he play on? What's his dead zones? Because it looks like he's figured something out that others haven't. It's so hard to say that any one player should get the sniper on the dead inside roster, but I think Ezo is one of the best snipers that I've ever watched. I, th I could probably say the same thing about Descendant, but it would be really cool to see them trusting Ezo with the sniper more, give him some more room to slay out in his comfort zone, because I really think that's when he plays his best. But uh, so far, they're definitely clicking. That was kind of the question mark. When I saw this roster, I'm like, OK, this looks like a powerhouse roster, but will they click, and will that teamwork fit? Well, here you go. And over the shoulder point of view of the open bracket main stage. Eli, something we've never gotten to see. This is the first time in Halo history that the open bracket gets gets put on the pedestal it deserves to be on. The open bracket is the lifeblood of Halo competition. The pros that you see on the main stage now had to grind their way through this open bracket. So to put them on the main stage, to put them on featured matches like this, I, I just got chills when I saw this. I thought this was the featured station when I showed up yesterday to the pre-show. And they said, no, 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 this is the LVT open bracket main stage. And I, I got goosebumps from that. The word may LVT bracket, open bracket main stage. I think that's an incredible so achievement for not just LVT, but also for the open bracket to just be able to be highlighted properly so you can see these potential star players from the very beginning. You never know who you're going to see here today that in a year you might see up on the main, main stage oh, just yeah. killing it. Uh, you, you just never know. Here we have uh, Mind Freak, right? That Australian team. And there's there's a lot on the line here right now. This is yes. quarterfinals. The, moving from here, if you move forward, you're going to be in semifinals. That's where you know if you're going to be <laughs> in the qualifying rounds. So a lot on the line here for both of these two teams dead inside who wants to you know is this the, the squad are they like you said Eli are they clicking and then the Australian team trying to you know carry a whole region on their back Mind Freak have it tough man they this Ross they don't really get to practice you have no one to scrim against There's we no talked one. to yeah. Norwin for quad or uh, into the breach excuse me with uh, SLG. SLG, yeah, yeah, for Quadrant. Yeah. For Quadrant, excuse me. And they have they have nobody to, to compete and scrim against in EU. What do you think it's like for the ANZ crew? So I mean, I got yeah. to spend a lot of time with Rice and Scoob at the last event. They were at the Airbnb that I went to, and like they're just telling me, like they didn't even really play Halo for like two months before the last tournament. Like, yeah. Because they, they didn't have it, but then they showed up like a week early. They got the most out of it. <laughs> I would, I would have to ask Scoobmeister himself, but I would not be surprised if part of the inspiration for that Forge warm-up creation he made was because he couldn't play against other humans. Yeah, <laughs> you, had, you had to build in the AI bots to get the best version of yourself out, and it is so cool to see ANZ and Mexico have their spots rescinded from them and get it back in blood, both making it out of the open bracket this year onto the main stage into top 12. So they didn't even just stop at pool play and get into the top 16. No, they won a lower round one matchup at the very least to earn themselves a top 12 placing. Love to see that from our international competitors who, let's be honest, face a little bit more adversity than we do in NA. That ping. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That ping is the first thing. I, I don't know how people, <laughs> eyes out of NA even, just jump into the game. Like, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. If I had to play on 200 ping every day, I would play a different video game. I'm going to yeah. be straight up. <laughs> me, and me I too. think a lot of them have made that call. But these guys said, we're going to we still rep for our country, and we're going to just form a super team. That's really what this is. This right. is the four best players in Australia. There's a few other guys that are probably watching this. They're like, hey, I could maybe be on that list. There's, there's a couple of them.
But uh, these guys are the best of the best. But to give you guys an update, complexity, just be optic, 3 1. Nah. Let's uh, go. Oh. Complexity <laughs> over Congrats. optic. You know? so, what about so. Cloud9 and uh, Rebellion? That was an I, upset I think brewing. Still playing over there. Uh, it's probably going to game five. I'll keep Is you it updated. 2 2 right now? Uh, I'm not sure. All right. I'll go well, Tool's going to go check our uh, on field reporter is <laughs> on uh, investigating the score. He's <laughs> right. the jack of all trades. Uh -huh. Tool's is the best, man. Yeah, he's he adminning tournaments, he's hosting, he's casting, he's uh, just. He's, he's, he's doing a, everything. He's doing it all. He's doing He's the it. man. Oh, without I love asking tools. for anything. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Hands on the pulse of the tournament. And uh, looks like maybe there were some tech issues everyone restarted their xboxes at the same time pippin uh -oh. trust him EAC to make sure it's hitting land <laughs> under control perhaps yeah. looks like he's telling them to join piggy's lobby so piggy going to be the host here keep in mind it's a dedicated server no such thing as host unlike the halo 2 we played last night yeah <laughs> which by the way natty knight was abusing i'm just oh, going to i'm going to call on he's right behind abusing. me he might uh smack me upside the back of my head no he, but... had, he admitted it he said i was abusing the Got a host. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you were. It was, it was snipe down levels of, of 2006 free yeah. for alls. It really was for 99. So much fun to compete against him in the 2v2 against him and Teets, otherwise known as Active. <laughs> and, Active's uh, original gamer tag, Teets. That was fun a fact. Was that really? It was in a, a meme? Fun fact, he told me this recently, <laughs> and I, I had no idea. I coached him when he was like 14 years old, and he was using the name Teets. Before he ever became active, he bought lessons from me in the Halo 2 days. And, what uh, a full circle moment. Crazy, right? <laughs> and now wow. here we are, passing together. Big push coming in here now. You got three members of Shopify Ooh, looking at this that is a This is you we wanted to see. Player. Cloud9 versus Shopify Rebellion. And it is a 2-2, two -two, I called it. Game five. And Cloud9. Now granted, Shopify also a great Slayer team. They had that seven or eight and one record at Arlington to start the season in Slayers. But I think Cloud9's pretty even composition there. They, this is a great Slayer squad. You've got Sav, Spectre, one of the best Slayer duos in the HCS. Mental earns a trade sticky from the grave. Looks like Shopify, though, out to a five-point lead, approaching the midway mark. New Shock Rifle just came up, nine-minute mark. Looks like Manny kind of thought he could get across. But uh, looks like our main match will be loading in. If you want to watch the other matches that are going down, uh, the Halo channel, I believe, is where you can watch that one right now. But this is exciting, man. Like I said, this was the series I was looking forward to the most, and we're finally kicking it off. Solitude Slayer game two. All right, here we go. Heading right into a Solitude Slayer. Hopping on board here with Swayze, who did not have the best start to game one, but started to heat up a little bit. Oh, Descendant, no. already starting off hot with that shock rifle. Takes down one. It's an opening break win. We're dead inside. Nah, so, somebody yeah. stopped moving. Something's still wrong. Maybe an audio issue? I'm not sure. There's always a few things that we got to work out at the beginning of these tournaments, you know. The second round of Oddball win. Oh. So Shopify with the reverse, reverse, reverse. Oh. And they were also <laughs> down in that game. You put I a mean, reversal in your reversal. So you get a, oh the ultimate God. reverse sweep as we are now back to our main featured match on the open bracket main stage here. Dead Inside versus Mind Freak off the opening start. It's 2-4, Mind Freak in the lead. Shock Rifle still down somewhere at the Slime Tower. Have to imagine a member of Mind Freak in better positions to grab it. They also grabbed the camo. Not sure which player it was that grabbed that camo, but got the names back on the screen now. The Mind Freak come out with an early lead. I think they got better items as well. Iggy working through. Oh my god, with his teammate. Does trade out, but where'd that back smack come from? Great positioning from Mind Freak. They maintain the lead up three. It's going to be Plasma with the shock this time. They have said in their interviews, yeah, we just give the shock to the controller players. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? You got that aim assist. Very difficult to hit. Shock rifle shots on mouse and keyboard. The stability needed to have all three of those beams land on the head. As they do, relinquish control of that shock rifle. It's going to go back into the hands, potentially, though, of Mind Free. And that's a huge win to lose the shock rifle and get it right back. But no, they're not going to. Swayze gets back smacked. Dead inside should take possession of the shock, but possession of the lead is still in my freak's favor. Up three. Pretty good. The snipe side of the map is good, but not when they all know you're here and can easily hunt you down as they've done so. Mind freak. Do somehow get these kills and stay alive. How did Rice just stay alive in that moment? That was insane. He was one shot. Great help coming out of the team. Ezo 
Trying to get some high side advantage, but he goes down. <laughs> Biggie now. Low shields. Can anticipate the chase is coming through, and it does. Scootmeister, I believe that was, takes him down, and now Mind Freak with a big lead. It feels like it's been a rather slow paced start to this solitude, and Mind Freak have been taking advantage of that. This feels like many 2v1 scenarios in favor of Mind Freak. Dead inside, gotta start playing closer together, start using that teamwork. Baiting and switching each other out. Can't get overconfident. These guys on Mind Freak are no joke. I mean, the thing is, if you're an American team, a lot of these guys have not had the experience to play against these guys enough to know just how dangerous they are. And I think they're finding that out in the, in the hardest way possible. By the way, at the top of the screen, it's dead inside that have the 1-0 lead, not Mind Freak for, for context here. Impressive play there previously from Swayze with the camo. Not trying to force anything. Doesn't need to here with Mind Freak up doubly. 9 to 18, now 10 19 as Dead Inside go three down. This is the exact opposite of the start we saw previously. And now a triple, triple kill secured kill. for Plasma. No opportunity for the overkill, but it's domination now for Mind Freak in the Slayer. Look at this. He moves forward to block the tram spawn. Probably expected a loop spawn at some point, so he's patiently walking through here. Now, as he cuts down the shields and Cuts off an entire rotation of the map. Teammates are going to blink through, but Descendant, always so disgusting with the shock rifle. He's going to find two and have to scurry away to get his shields back. Descendant secured the win in game number one. Now he's helping secure what looks like a comeback dead inside. But just I say that, 12 to 22, Mind Freak have really ran away with it in the opening goings as Descendant. A lot of shock rifle left to work with, but Mind Freak wanted two pushing up the poster side. Send it goes down to low HP, has support though. Ooh, gotta hit those. What the f almost looked like flink shots coming through. They were. Mind Freak has had better positioning. Those are that's two to three times. Like we've seen better positioning and then a surprising flank come through for Mind Freak that neither of us or Dead Inside were expecting. They've been catching them off guard on repeat this whole game. Maybe their style of play just not similar to North American teams. I mean, sometimes you get used to playing the same meta against the same type of teams, and then you get thrown a curveball like this Mind Freak roster. It's no surprise. That, uh, maybe they can catch him off guard. The greatest play at the highest level of competitive Halo is the one your opponent doesn't expect. And so far, Mind Freak have had multiple flanks that have really pulled the slippy on dead inside. As I did see that camo up top mid. Not sure who was able to make it away with it. As Descendant makes his way through to A, has a thrust to work with. And Descendant, one of the nastiest players with the thrust. Everybody had an advantage with that equipment, but Descendant especially so. He'll probably dip back here, stay alive. He does. Gets the assist to send it with a great play with that thrust. All the while, though, Mind Freak have kept their nine or ten kill lead for quite a Halo's while. This still there. was sitting here for so long, 45 seconds. They did not despawn. Takes about a minute, I think, to despawn. That's if no one's looking at it. So camo and thrust. So Descendant really has that sneaky kit, the mobility kit, and now he has an opponent in his sights. A good grenade toss, and no, Descendant with that thrust, able to avoid all wow. fragmentation grenade double damage. Kill. Earns the double kill, gonna get back up to full shields quicker because of that, and already working his way into the cafe, dead inside, are absolutely forming a comeback led by Descendant. Look at this, immediately cutting through the other side of the map, predicting the next set of spawners. He's ready to apply pressure, but they're ready for him as well. Immediately shot as soon as he exposes himself. That's great awareness out of Mind Freak to know that he's on the way and some great damage as well to keep him at bay. Descendant has been called out. All members of Mind Freak, once they turn around the corners, whether it's the left or right side, instant shots into Descendant, which sends him down below wow. the A ledge. Three go down for dead inside. And now Mind Freak are starting to regain some of that control, but now the match is close when things unofficially officially start. 31-34. For a moment, dead inside had brought it back to within one kill, but Mind Freak do clean up the situation. Got the kills they needed to to at least get out of the trap. Six minute mark is approaching. Most important minute of the game. Both Camo and Shock spawning right now. Which team will win this next fight and get control of it? Plasma, he's been on fire with the Shock all game long. Gets it again. Is unable to stay alive though. And they're gonna wanna get back to that snipe side to get that Shock right. Dead inside or only down one. They're now tied after previously being down 10. They brought this game back. But Mind Freak, regain the lead, only up by one. Scoop Meister. He's a push, doesn't see it. Camo is still up, and it's gonna take a couple of slays to earn that next camo, top mid. Oh, somebody stole it. Somebody got away with it. Somebody, somebody on dead inside. Not sure which player it was. But Mind Freak have changed their strategy. They said, let's wait for this camo guy to reveal himself. It's not overexposed. I feel like this ledge is one of the more predictable ways for him to appear. 
descendant. He's trying to juke. I think he's like, they saw me. I'm going to act like I'm going somewhere else, but then come back. The, the, the no juke juke. Comes back with the plasma pistol charge. As the camo expires, gets oh. one, but good job by Mindfreak to clean that up. The rest of the desert side are here, though. Good job by Descendant, yeah. too, after getting stuck to work his way towards that player. Take them down to one HP as they do get cleaned up. Nice cleanup there from 358. That sways. Wow. 40 all. This is big right here. Sway's still not playing the way that we're used to seeing him, man. But he needs to get back into the mix. 40 all. Collapses in. Somehow that player stays alive. That's massive for Mind Freak. Seems like they have each other's back in so many of these situations. Next camo's already up. You can see both teams now setting up for it. Mind Freak on the poster side, dead inside on the cafe. Flowers. Oh, Huge. great nade shot there from Swayze. Maybe that's what gets him back in the game. They got three dead right there and only lost one player. Extended their lead back to four, which is five to go. You feel pretty good about your chances. On top of that, they've taken up 75% of the map. Force the spawns into the blue side, not where dead inside want to be. Once again, they've got to figure out a way out of this. We saw Shopify in the same position in the last game five that we saw. They were able to successfully escape. I don't know if Mind Freak's going to make it that easy in this case, though. Now, Mind Freak have the camo. Scoopmeister playing more for intel and information rather than damage. Playing this patiently. The four kill lead Plasma with that intel, with those pings. Starts to find an angle here to find some side shots here, some unsuspecting foes for dead inside. But they are watching their six. Feels like Mind Freak's totally content with just keeping the, these animals trapped in their cage. I mean, look at their. This is what all, Shopify was facing. Yeah, they're literally all trapped there. They have nowhere to go. All of their escape options are watched. If you're dead inside, you have to make some type of play call here. Do we all send it to one side? But at that time, you're worried about getting flanked, so you've got to just watch all the entry points as best you can. All the exit points are being watched on the other side, and time's just burning off the clock. The longer this standoff ensues, the more the clock becomes a factor in a fifth teammate. You could argue for Mind Freak up four already. Again, the emphasis is on dead inside to make their push, and eventually they're going to have to choose to go. And it looks like Envor has chosen that moment for now. Ezo goes down, oh. though, dead inside. Wow. Make it a 2 2, but a trade out here just continues on. That four kill lead for Mind Freak, needing only three more to secure a tie in the series. It looked like it's such a good play by Envor and his teammate there. But as they make those that those two kills, two of their teammates die behind them. So in the end, not worth it. Mind Freak just closer to that finish line. And Camo's coming up in 15 seconds. Everything in favor of Mind Freak right now. And as long as they don't make any silly mistakes, oh. should be able to close this out. And Mind Freak know that Dead Inside, it's on them to push. So Sway's there shooting the pad to stop that push. Through LR. Rice now, down to low shields, down to the bottom of the map. Has support, though, on the hotel side, but that player's taking some shots. 3-5-5, Scoob Meister gets a huge wow. slay, makes it a five-kill game, and this one's over. Wow. Mind Freak, tie up the series. So disciplined in the end of that game. A lot of teams would get impatient and be like, they're all stuck there, let's just push them. But no, they that's, waited That's what Cloud9 did, yeah. and what happened? Lost that one, 49-50. I even said, I said, why would they take the Disadvantageous positioning. I know maybe setting up for the next camo, but Shopify Rebellion in there uh, in this series had had nowhere to go. That half A spawn, you could argue, is even worse than the A spawn sometimes on Solitude. And oh, for sure. What it a is. Great there's job. Just no items in there. Right. There's, you get a couple plasma grenades, that's it. There's nothing to work with there, and Mind Freak played that perfectly well. It almost like they played. They played like a King of the Hill where you're up 2 0 with 120 left on the clock. That's what it felt like almost there. Mind Freak was content to take that to triple zero, but they earned 50 and said, in a hard fought series tie, this one, Eli, we go the distance. Our first best of five so far in the open bracket. We might just see game five, but here you can see early on, Mind Freak were up big. That was a big one for Swayze, too, I think. Like we've said, this is not the normal play that we're used to seeing out of Swayze. We're used to seeing him pop off. He's usually one of the main slayers. Hasn't looked like that so far this series, but just getting that one win, having the confidence, hey, I didn't even need to slay out, and we still got the win. Maybe that's the comfort that he needs going into this third game. Both matches so far in this series have taken on the same complexion in that one team gets out to a very big lead in the early goings, and then the other team has a great end game, but they get so far out of it in the beginning and middle that they don't have a chance in the end, ultimately. So, which one's 
which way is this one going to go? And I believe when we took a look at our series layout previously, an oddball sets up for game three. So you're going to take not only a 2-1 series edge after this game, but a really big advantage, I think especially so after an oddball that lasts at least 15, 20 minutes or so. I think it was Streets oddball, if I'm not mistaken. So it's going to be a fast-paced one, very different from those first two games. You cannot really afford to sit around and do nothing on this game type. You have to be moving at all times. It's kind of the most forceful of action of any game type, I think. This one's going to come down to me, Eli. It's going to come down to the rotations because of how small the map is, like you were just inferring. You get four down, you might not even get four seconds off of that because of how quickly the other team is able to come back off of spawn and already probably have an angle on your hold. So look out for the rotations on the fulcrums along the red and purple side of the map as we are live. Game three, series tied here between Dead Inside and Mind Free. Scoopmeister with the Commando. This guy's probably shot 7,000 bots with the Commando since the last tournament. Just making sure that he is on fire with every weapon. So far, it's just kind of a positioning play here. Both teams staying alive for camo as best they can. Looks like Dead Inside will get the first camo. But some great grenade damage and Mind Freak get too dead, but Dead Inside had the whole sandbox. 40 seconds burned off the regulation clock, and nobody has controlled the oddball just yet. And again, it just goes to show how difficult it is to hold the line on streets where the action is fast and frenetic as Rice. With that mouse and keyboard, bounce fast, grenade toss. Not good enough, though, to keep him up. Sways looks to clean up on some of that damage. Not able to take down either. So a nice bait and switch there from Dead Inside, but already 60 seconds off the clock, and no time added for either team on that oddball. That was 4-0, by the way. Okay. Enemy has some curse. <laughs> That's going to be on uh, Super CC's bingo card. Caster Curse was one of the squares on that that I saw. But here we go. Rice trying to find a timing, just maybe create an opening back here. As he does, finds a back smack. Will the rest of Mind Freak be able to push in and capitalize on the play? We go down for Mind Freak, so this should set up for Dead Inside and a good hold here. But Scoopmeister has control of the, the trash can. And the oddball inside of C means Dead Inside aren't going to get much time until just now. So Mind Freak doing a great job keeping Dead Inside from scoring, despite only having one player up. It's just constant pressure, right? Scoopmeister understanding as long as he stays alive, they can't comfortably grab the oddball. I can cut off teammates from rotating in from the other side. Also just kind of leaves an opening for Mind Freak to push through. Scoopmeister's here now as well. Great damage being placed out, but I forget about playing this well. Problem is they don't have any points on the board yet. Better efficiency. Mind Freak have more slays. They just now get on the board, but it's just an Olive Garden breadstick. 23 to 1 here is dead inside. Have looked good here in the opening goings. And with just three minutes left on the clock down regulation, this one feels like it's gonna go to time. Yeah, already 40% of the in-game clock burned off with just 20% of the scoring limit reached by one side. Great assassination there from Plasma. Catches that player off guard, but Oddball just staying on the ground for so long. Great gonna reset. Kill. Yeah, I think someone needs a touch Three, soon. two, one, should reset. Pancake triple kill, killing spree. Wants the overkill for the clip. Doesn't hit it, but still, making sure that player dies. Oddball did get picked up before resetting. That's big for Mind Freak. That was at the final seconds of that 30 second reset clock as Swayze is able to pick it up. Having himself what looks like his best start of a match here in game three as Dead Inside get the first 23 seconds, but it's Mind Freak bouncing back. Looks like they're set up to tie up this match, but no, they stopped just one second short. Great plays out of Plasma. He's behind it too, but these guys bringing the heat in this game three. Scoop sees the writing on the wall. Teammates dead, two players pushing through. Let's rotate out, get our shields back. Very good teamwork and chemistry and coordination that I've seen out of both teams so far. Oddball sort of feels like it's being set up as bait here for Mind Free because they're pulling in the push from Dead Inside and taking care of it. But a big slay there for Dead Inside. It's Encore, I believe, that stayed alive. Rezo. But with three down for Dead Inside, Mind Freak are going to have the first chance to grab the Oddball off the reset. And we're going to see the first possession on the A side. You can see Encore looking back at the backside of C, but everybody making their way to A. So smart to check the corners in that moment, though. Even though he's on the other side, you feel real silly if you walk around and get back smacked in a moment like this. 
New camo came up, and the pod board is heating up. Looks like basically a triple kill. He's made a huge opening for Deadside to get their next stretch of all time. Envor right now has double the slays to, for, compared to everybody on his team, sitting at 4, 5, and 5. Envor with 11 and 10 seconds of objective time. He's really keeping dead inside in it here, and not only in it, they have just about regained the lead, but at 23, 22, it's been close. Now 38, 39, neither team able to find any separation. Okay. Yeah, every time one team seems to have a hold, like you said, as this was loading in, you just can't hold it for very long. The next push is going to be there in a hurry. Ezo checking his corners as he walks up the map. Has to on this game type. Corner camping has become very prevalent. For good reason, it's a good strategy, but this soccer rifle looks to do a lot of damage, and it does. First kill, and second player gets the no shields. The Mind Freak don't have many, anywhere safe to go. Ezo with that stalker rifle ball. shuts down an attempted rotation from A to C for Mind Freak, but they've just helped dead inside. Set up strongly at the backside of C, and after a 20 second lead taken by Mind Freak, you could just see another 20 here go to dead inside. With 90 seconds left in regulation, this one is still too close to call. This feels like a play that Descendant learned from Ryan Noob, does it not? Ball <laughs> ball. Descendant Enemy has taking one out of his old team captain's book. And this he's looking left to not have his bandit peek out. Yeah. So he's doing a great job to obscure himself. Doesn't need the shroud screen to stay hidden now. Heads inside of it to take down one. Can he make it two? No, he goes down, but not before dead inside. Flip the lead. Wow. Probably could have got a little more value out of that had he played it slightly more patiently, but still got significant value regardless. Scoopmeister wants to get this camo so he can use it to break the next setup. Oddball has been played the mid map. Looks like one member of Mind Freak does go down, but ammo successfully in the suit of Scoop Master. Shooter on the back smack here does earn the double. Double kill. Two more on the cafe side as Mind Freak are set up well to score this next bit of oddball time. But again, dead inside, they're doing a great job despite not having a numbers advantage, just keeping the opposition busy and thinking of something else other than scoring points as Mind Freak are able to secure the oddball, take it into B, and with less than 60 seconds left, it's just a nine second game. Oh, look at this. Dead Inside tried to fight their way with the oddball into C, but Mind Freak holding strong. Great bait More down. switch. Somehow these two players, I think, just killed the entire Dead Inside roster. That was insane. And here's where you might see Mind Freak Eli take the lead and then maybe drop the oddball. They don't need to hold on to it. Play 3v4. They can have that oddball layout and play for triple zero. I think they're going to play for as much time as they can get, though. 40 seconds is more than how many they need to close this out. So they can hold it. But then as the push comes in, they are definitely ready to throw a mid map. 70, 79 with 30 seconds left. Descended and two more of his teammates go down. That's three in total for Dead Inside. Encore, the last Spartan standing, and he might have to overextend here. He does, forcibly so, but that's going to mean four go down for Dead Inside. And Mind Freak, he just one more hold to win round one. I think you're right, though. Now they've decided they're not going to hold it. They're just going to play time. 15 seconds. Sways cutting off the rotation with the Stalker right uh oh But Dead Inside get a kill and should be able to push forward. Oh, they, they get it! They do grab the ball. Five, Five seconds, seconds left. left. Three dead. Scoop Meister, the last player alive. Now he, like Envor, is going to have to overextend, force the fight as dead inside with five seconds left. Take a one second lead and will likely drop the oddball here and hold on for their life. Two seconds left. And they're going to secure it with a double kill from Envor. Uh, what an unbelievable round one as dead inside clutch up. Envor 18 and 11 in just that last round. Two of those kills coming at the final moments that were most important. So clutch as we've seen from him so often in these matches. Oh, man, what a round one of oddball here on streets. As it has delivered so far on Vor after icing up and Lee, he's he's one of the iciest players in the HS. He doesn't get the credit I think he deserves for being one of the nastiest players. It comes down to clutch time as dead inside, win round one, and win the opening break out of round two. They're starting to roll. Descendant with the double kill. I think I heard him get loud as he landed it as well. This camo is up, and Descendant doesn't care if he gets it. He just wants to stop Mind Freak from getting it for now. But it looks like they did send enough resources. Look, I think Plasma, the one that able to, was able to grab it, yes. Can he get any value out of this, though? That's the question. Plasma with the sleigh. Look at a double. Enemy Final seconds of that kill. camo, but it's the seconds with Ball the oddball run. control that he cares more about. Let that camo dissipate. 20 to 2 here. He's dead inside. 
Got the start that we saw previously from Mind Freak in round number one. Three go down for Mind Freak. Sways the last part standing for his team, and he's got no hope. Out on an island underneath the palm trees, and Mind Freak go for it out. So, Bloods. That side playing great right now. They're just making life difficult for Mind Freak to get through. Triple kill now, four on four. Wants to make yeah. it overkill, but 22 and 12, the stat lines got 30 seconds as well. It's one thing when you're slaying out in volume, Eli. It's another thing when you're earning, earning the clutch slays, the consequential slays as well. And that's what Envor has done. And hey, he's got 30 seconds of oddball time as well. So Envor having himself a hell of a game three here to potentially give his team series edge. Now, the biggest lead we've seen yet in this game, 62 and rolling to the two for Mind Freak. Dead inside are starting to heat up. Like Encore is also the IGL ball in a lot of these situations. He's calling the shots. I mean, this guy's doing it all right now. Ball drop. I know Mind Freak have more in the tank, but this round is spiraling out of control. It is non-stop. And that uh, don't don't get me wrong, that prompt is very enticing, but that shotgun is not gonna get me picked up. <laughs> Were your intrusive thoughts telling you to pick it up? I would have picked it up. I, mean, I don't care, man. Just subconsciously, right? You're pressing X to pick up the shotgun. This is Halo. As it should Andor. be okay to like just use it to, like uh, to have a second. Why? Why? Yeah, for why? I, I agree. I don't think Jay's would be broken uh, unless it gets fired. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, also ball. takes away the prompt. Uh, the there's up some of the screen space. Nonetheless, Envor from dead inside are rolling now with a 62 to two lead. Now they've thrown that to 85. Mind Freak need a four down. Mind Freak need a monstrous hole if they want to get back in this fight. They do take three down, so there's that team wipe we were looking for, but you got to take down Descendant. They do, and so Mind Freak don't have much time left to work with. Only 15 seconds needed for dead inside, but how long can they hold? They need to get the first slay in this break right here. If they can get the first slay here and shut the push down early, they could start to roll a bit, but if they die first in this round, the oddball is going to have to get dropped to just be a part of the fight and Mind Freak's gonna really thwart their chances here. You've got the setup though. First pick is massive right now for Mind Freak. Stalker still with 44%, so that can spell trouble. And damage in the Molnar armor of dead inside as Sways makes his way towards the backside of A. Has shots into one, takes him down to absolute HP. Can finish up here with the Bandit, and he does. Nice sequence here for Mind Freak. The last minute, 90 seconds you could argue, have gone to them, and they've gotten back in this fight. Now looking to make a crucial oh, rotation to, the, to A. As C spawns come through for Dead Inside, and Mind Freak are going to win that rotation to A. Swayze is waking up. That was his POV we were just on, and I've been saying since this series started, once he comes online, Mind Freak is a different beast, and kind of showing that here, but guess what? Other members on the other side, Envor, has definitely come online, and if he's got anything to say about it, he's going to try to stop this momentum in a hurry. Still doubled up on the lead in this round, are Dead Inside, and with three dead, Descendant looks to close out the round if he can get out the same. Main switch. Mind Freak worried about the oddball, but they got to worry about Ezo dropping in, playing bodyguard, but Ezo goes down. That's going to not allow Dead Inside to make that rotation on Vork. And top A, Plasma with the camo secured. And Mind Freak have cut this lead in half. They've been chipping away. And unlike in round one, where we saw that regulation clock get burned away, it's been more focused on the oddball time here in round two, which gives oh. Mind Freak plenty of time to come back. See that grenade? That was almost disgusting. But as I say that, two members of Mind Freak go down. I feel like Enemy has the ball. Plasma had the play there, but it's not going to work Enemy out. Has the ball. Or will it? 2-2 two -two split. That all ball's bait. Plasma knows it. He waits out the final seconds of that camo, now setting up for a push. Underneath him, he has an opponent. He does play for that oddball, but again, that's bait. Great plays here from Mind Freak, playing patiently despite being down by 30 seconds. So hard to be patient in this moment. You feel like, oh man, I gotta go grab the ball so they don't, but you gotta play that process. Enemy has Can't the grab ball. the ball if they're dead, so let's <laughs> find the kills first. Meister now. Good shots below the Nairobi Massive club. Massive shots. Potential double kill here on the pillars. Enemy Both players peak strafing their way to a potential massive pivot win. What well, was that player escapes? And you can see Scoopmeister firing shots at the pillar. He can't even believe he's there. Quick flip with the mouse and keyboard. He still can't believe he rotated there. And who got that slay? Great positioning. Wow. I can't believe they stayed alive. And that wins dead inside the round. I'm not sure who that was, Eli, but that just won game three. That was so impressive. I think it was Piggy, if I'm not mistaken. You talking about the oddball player that grabbed the ball? No, I'm talking about the player that the took Scoopmeister's attention yeah, and played yeah. his life because Scoopmeister couldn't worry about the oddball because he had to worry about Piggy, whoever it was or dead inside, and somehow they made their way to trash can and took down Scoopmeister on the benches. Wow, that was unbelievable in the end game. Onboard dropping the 8K, as did uh, 
That's Swayze, I believe. Or no, sorry, Jack is Rice, I believe. Yeah, Ethan Scoobmeister, Jack Rice. So Rice having a huge damage Double output game. Kill. Ultimately not enough. That was a very sick triple, triple kill. kill by Plasma starting off hot. Really wanted this overkill, but players being very difficult to kill. Honestly, my think looks good during many portions of this game, but just a little bit more icy where the side of dead inside. Yeah, there's where you might have thought Envor had something brewing there with that perfectly hit. D-slide into the headshot combination, but we saw great play from both teams, really. Despite Envor unquestionably being the standout player in this lobby. Everybody having themselves a game, and that game three was massive again. The oddball didn't quite go to 20 minutes. Felt more like a 15-minute match, Eli, but I always think there's a little bit extra weight involved when you win an oddball. Because even if it does go to just two rounds, it's still longer than anything else you play in Halo Infinite. The most effort expended in a single game, for sure. Just energy depleting. You're the side that loses it. In a way, it's better to lose 2-0 than to lose 2-1, I think. I agree entirely. <laughs> So, because all that wasted effort, it's an investment, and you get no reward from it, so it's, it's all risk. And a big win there for Dead Inside as they will take that 3-1 series lead. I was really impressed with their ability to come out in round number two and just really run away with it. Of course, Mind Freak to chase. But Mind Freak, despite being put in a, in a position where they had to overextend, were still playing their process, which I think bodes well for them going into an, another objective here in game four. I also think I recall Scoobmeister saying that they just suck at oddball. Like, it's just their worst game type. So sometimes if you just know, like, hey, that's our weakness, we can shrug it off and move on. Uh, we, now we go to a very different game mode. We've got Interference Strongholds. This is going to be interesting. All right, here we go. Interference Strongholds is your game app combination for game number four. And Eli, there is no more important opening break than this particular map and game mode combination because the winner of the opening break sometimes runs out to a 100-second head start and off the start. It's Mind Freak winning it. Due to even split, and it looks like they'll be able to hold on for now. Who got this overshield, though? I don't know if it came off the map. Four dead for dead inside. That's massive. I don't know if they also got the overshield. If they did, even yes, they just grabbed the overshield right now. Oh, that's huge. And are about to proc it into the next fight. Oh, I thought maybe with 25% overshield, that would have been huge. And I thought that's what they would have been at for Mind Freak. But Waze has a full litany of that extra overshield to work with. Playing patiently here, waiting letting the game come to him, expecting that push here through the long haul, and he's already got some shots into the back. Members of Dead Inside, and interesting positioning here, playing very patient. Again, Mind Freaks, maybe that's their MO, is patience. Even with something like the Overshield, you expect the correct aggressiveness, but Sways is playing it patient. I mean, these guys are playing exactly how I tell my students all the time to play this map. Don't, don't overextend and go to C. If you got A, B, like, just hold A, B. There's only so many ways they can cap either A or B. Just hold the line and stop them from pushing through. They've done a beautiful job of that. Three dead again. Descendant last player does find it with his way up here. Can't land the sticky, though. And if he dies right now, he's going to be staggered for his teammates. Yes, this that this looks like a lot more time for Mind Freak after seeing that play. Yeah, we're starting to see that 100-0 start that we predicted materialize as Mind Freak. It's been all Mind Freak here in game number four. Looking to force a game five with... So much on the line here in Salt Lake City. We'll play main stage matches, champ bracket in a spot at the Halo World Championship as the overshield gets wow. grabbed. Another clutch win for Mind Freak. Two for two on the overshields, and they're soaring into the 100s with full control of this map. So not even doing anything flashy, just being in the spots to push him back. Like, does it even matter if you actually kill the guy if you just force him to back up and get his shields back every six seconds? How much time do you accumulate on the score? just by pushing him back. Sometimes taking an opponent down to one HP and sending them to the back of the map takes more than the 10 seconds off the map that they would uh, if they were on the respawn screen. It does. And look at this. They have done a very good job of blocking that bunker spawn as well. So had they left the bunker spawn open, by the way, Rice had to go grab ammo off that dead body because he was out of ammo. <laughs> wow. The only reason he, he went over yet. there. Yeah, he's two, three, and zero. OK, finally it's taken down, but what a great start for Mind Freak. They've got just about 150 on the board. Now, told, we said it's a game of runs here on Interference Strongholds, which means dead inside. All they need is one bit of, one bit of capping here, maybe through BNC they can get back on the board, and then they can realistically score 150 seconds back. I know that sounds like a pretty far of a stretch here, but there's something about this map game mode combination that just plays to runs. But Mind Freak aren't going to let them get anything as they continue on 160 and rolling to zero for dead inside. They're goosing at OBJ. 
I mean, this has just Double been masterfully kill. played. That Mind Freak are clearly very comfortable on that AB setup. Everything's going to flip, though, I think. I think now it's going to be C in favor of Mind Freak. Dead Inside should be able to flip A. They have actually no, the split spawns come out for Mind Freak. They're going to be able to contest both sides. Not sure if that plays to their favor, though, because now they're a bit isolated from each duo of their team. Envor has been a consistent stud for Dead Inside at 7, 2, and 4. Again, has the most slays in the lobby, but it's not enough. Dead Inside, you get back on the board. And with control of B and C, they need at least two minutes, Eli, to make this a game. 100%. I mean, they're basically down by three minutes. But it looks like Dead Inside want to go for the B, C hold. I think they're okay with Mind Freak having A. I think that's more commonly the preferred hold, but I mean, Mind Freak now have had AC a few times. He got three dead, on board last player alive, and he's gonna get shut down. I mean, he just cannot finish the kill of the one-shot player that was being called out. I don't know if I like that play from Plasma. Plasma thinking he wants to secure the trip cap, but when he goes down, that just empowers Dead Inside to push forward. You don't need a trip cap. The, yeah. the, again, the risk wasn't worth the potential reward you could get there because you're already oh, up 191 to 19. You could play that patient game that's been Mind Freak's benefit. That's been their advantage. It's been their strategy in this series. They've been the more patient team, which is a little bit of an inversion from what we expect with the fast pace of Halo Infinite. But Mind Freak is rewriting the book a little bit here. As Dead Inside do get back on the board, control of B and C, and they can't relinquish control like they did previously after 20 seconds. They need to find at least a minute here. This player has been at top tower seemingly this entire game for Mind Freak. I mean, I think he might finally go down as multiple members of Dead Inside are here to guarantee that he does get shut down. Now it's a trip cap, which is massive, and they're getting more kills while in the trip cap. Looks like a remote detonation does shut down Descendant. Might be the opening Mind Freak need to get out of this this world. Here we go. We're starting to witness that game of runs here as Dead Inside had themselves a stronghold on this map. Control of A, B, and C. This is longer than we saw Mind Freak hold a trip cap. So there are little wins for Dead Inside here in this one, but they're looking for the big one here, a win here of the series, and they're still holding on to all three. I mean, a couple more rounds of slaves, and they take the lead. Mind Freak, though, getting a couple of clutch kills when it matters. 2v2 situation on the map. A should at least flip to Mind Freak. Should he get this kill? Yes, he does. And Rice, after capping this, is going to try to look for a better space, but no, he gets shut down. Dead Inside looks to still score. They're going to flip A again. After a dominant start from Mind Freak, it's just a 30 second match, and the last two minutes have been all dead inside as Piggy his way through the middle, has an opponent weak. He has the advantage through shields. He has the advantage through positioning, but now it's the bait and switch he has to worry about as Mind Freak call for help. Don't get it. They're going to need more of it as two players are down at the bottom side of B. High ground advantage for Dead Inside. Scoring advantage for Dead Inside. And despite the hot start from Mind Freak, Dead Inside have just flipped the match. Oh my god. Everything has turned on its head, and Mind Freak cannot get into a cap point. Every single time they do, they get cut down right afterwards. They got two dead right now, though. This is the best they've looked in the last couple of minutes, but can they convert it into a cap point? The way that Descendant is playing this, he's playing this pivot position to protect both B and C simultaneously, and he's going to do just that. After down, after being down nearly 200, it's a 20-point advantage here for Dead Inside, and they're now in the sprint finish towards a series victory and a chance in the next couple of rounds to qualify for pool play and get closer and closer to qualifying for the Halo Ooh. World Championship as Descendant works his way into C. Just one second needed left and one HP for his opponent. Easy grenade toss gives the hill positioning back to Descendant, but he's already pushing out to B. Most of Mind Freak making their way from B to A. It looks like that's the route they want to take to score again. They have the chance here with two down for Dead Inside. If they can flip A, they can get back into that comfort zone that got them this lead in the first place. It was A, B. But look at the push! Oh, Descendant! With the thrust and the fist! Oh my god. Okay, Might have just but secured the series. No, Mind Freak's still here, though. But while Mind Freak has to invest resources at A, Dead Inside are able to cap B. Next, next overshield could change this tide of this game. Send it started 0 oh and 6, now 10 oh, and... Oh, he missed the clamber. Oh, he missed the clamber, and he missed the overshield. Oh, but Ezo is still able to grab it. No, that was my friend that, that was missed the clamber. That missed the clamber. Oh my god, that is troubling. And that will be their undoing, potentially. Oh my god, dead inside stand up, but Mind Freaker inside a C. You gotta oh, wait a little, no. a little bit longer to talk your talk here. Okay. 
And there it is, dead inside. We're down by nearly three minutes. It was a three-minute lead for Mind Freak, and Envor shows again why he's one of the iciest players in the HES. Not er only earning the most slays in most every single one of these games, but earning the most important slays as well. MVP of the series for me. So clutch throughout that series. I mean, great fight from Mind Freak. They were up, what, 170 to zero, I think? That 8B hold was just so powerful, but as soon as Dead Inside got control of the map, they did not relinquish it whatsoever. Mind Freak only got another didn't 20 score points. Again after that. That was it. That was all she That's wrote from crazy. Mind Freak. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And Dead Inside will move one round further to that pool play qualification as this has been a fun team to watch. And boy, did Descendant look good. So did, too did Envor, Piggy. Ezo still working his way through. Some of the higher levels of competition, his best opportunity yet. <laughs> Despite not having the best game four, I still think we're seeing him take advantage of this opportunity. Double kill. He's getting better and better every day, I think, and will only continue to do so. Still very young as well, so cannot wait to see how these teams move on in the future. Wow, it looks like Dead Inside have moved on to semifinals and are just already looking at the qualifiers. They're there, they feel it. And this was one of the teams that we were thinking, can they can they make it through LAN? And here they are, taking down Mind Freak, another team that was also looking, well, they're going lower, brackets are not gone. Um, oh, hello. We got a guest over here in the chat. Double kill. We have Envor joining us here in the chat. What's up, Envor? What's up, bro? Right. What's up, Envor? 